Hey everyone, it's the last couple of days in November and I'm already starting to have an issue that I thought may have been a problem. I was hoping it wouldn't be, but it is. Here inside the sump pump pit this year, I installed this gravity drain line. And if you look in there, you can see there is a tiny bit of water that is trickling into the system right there. You can see it's already left a little brown water stain going through the entire 150 foot pipeline and the end of it is starting to form an ice dam so i'm going to show you my solution to this and it should be good i did this earlier in the year because i was concerned if these pumps ever failed that the basement would flood it's had a flooding history it's been a lot of damage twice in the past so the the way the system works is you see this float the float climbs this pole and when it hits this lever it turns the pump on and it comes up this tube right here. The reason it has this pole is because without that, if the float was on the end of the bar, like in the back of a toilet, it would be on, off, on, off, basically maybe every few seconds, every minute. But this, when it's activated, the pump stays on until the pit is empty. And then it takes a good 10 minutes maybe an hour depending on the flow rate to get this thing to come back up and turn it on. So this right here is supposed to be a solution to make sure the basement never floods if these things aren't working. It's just for a peace of mind not having to worry about these anymore. But this thing is starting to have an ice dam issue out at the far end and let me show you my solution to that. Then we're going to blast some water down here to get the ice dam out of it before it becomes a complete ice dam where nothing is going to be passing through it all right everyone i'm outside right now and this is the clean out from that system down there is the same pipe you can see that tiny little trickle of water that's what's coming out of the basement very high water table around here that runs for about half the year it dries up in the summertime and that's going to the frog pond I built over the summertime at the end of this drainage system. Before that gravity line was put in, we relied on this. Those pumps down in the pit, there's two of them. It comes in here, goes into a T. That pipe is very shallow. It's only a couple inches below the surface. While the new pipeline coming out of the basement is five feet, one foot below the floor. So over here is the old discharge for the sump pump, which probably will not ever run again unless there's an ice dam, which is a potential. So I just ordered a heat cable. Walking along, this grass is very green. I can't believe it's still growing this time of year. I guess it is warmer than normal. You see, there is some snow. I just mowed it because it was pretty long. Despite the snow, the grass is still growing. Here's the other end of that pipeline, and you can see where the water's dribbling out. Look at that. It's like a whole mound of ice. As it trickles out, it keeps freezing. Today's a warm day. It's about 50 out right now, but it's been pretty cold the past week, below freezing for the daytime highs. So now we got an ice dam here coming into the pond. You see, it's not a complete ice dam. It's only filling in maybe... 60 70 percent of the pipe but i think the only reason it didn't completely freeze is because it's warm today and it's starting to thaw this thing will completely thaw hopefully over the next few days but we're not going to wait a few days i'm going to turn the water on in the house get a big blast coming through here and then we're good the reason the other pipe despite only being a couple inches below the ground never froze is because every time the pump came on it was a big gush then it stopped. A little tiny trickle like this can easily freeze. I'm not gonna walk out there on the ice. I know it's definitely not safe. And this pond looks are deceiving. It may not look big, but I designed it so it's four feet deep in the center of it. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna cut this off. There's no reason it needs to extend three feet into the pond. I'm gonna cut it so it's only out like a foot once we get the ice dam out of there. Then I'm going to get a heat cable that I ordered. I have to go pick it up at the UPS office. A heat cable is commonly used on 
a rooftop to stop ice dams from forming. It melts the edge of the roof. They also have heat tape, which can go on the outside of plumbing in your basement if you have some area that's very drafty. So I'm going to go ahead, set a tr uh, camera up right here, go inside, and I'm going to start sending water through this with the basement hose, and we will see this thing melt out. Over on the other side of the pond is the overflow culvert right here. This really doesn't matter if it freezes up. Not that concerned about it. But if this thing keeps dribbling like it is, even with the heat cable, it may cause a giant buildup in front of that. But hopefully the heat cable will stop it from completely backing up. I don't expect that to be a problem. Well, I ran out here as fast as I can. I can't believe I beat the water. It's on its way. Ooh. Here it is. I heard it. It just hit the ice dam. There we go. I'll let that run a little while. That'll melt any ice out of the pipe. That's also going to get the overflow on the pond going. This ice that I have the tripod set up on is not very thick. Only about a half an inch. Would definitely not support my weight. Whoa! That was awesome! A lot faster than I thought. But I guess the edges of it were already compromised by today being a warm day. That slid out of there so nice. And look at that. The water's going over towards the overflow. I bet that's going to dig a hole right down through the ice. Just give it a matter of time. Now over here, the overflow is about to start going. Just let the surface of the water, or the surface of the ice, fill up with water. It'll make its way over here. This thing is for frogs to sit on in the summertime. They love that. Perfect flotation device, a piece of PVC lumber. It'll never sink like a normal piece of lumber would eventually after it got waterlogged. I'm kind of amazed how long this has taken to come over here. It appears the weight of the water is pushing it down like a bowl. So it's taking much longer than I thought to come over here. It also looks like it's about to start digging. See, it's already digging a hole like I mentioned. And that's not even hot water. That's just coming right out of the well. Oh, it's already starting to flow. See that in there? I think that it did dig a hole and it's just going underneath the ice. It already dug out. Yep. The other end of this is starting to trickle and I didn't even notice. There's actually a little ice dam in here too. Now that's starting to flow. It'll be flowing a lot more in a moment. Just let the surge catch up. Very good view of the pond. I can see the current starting to come around it's all entering the culvert now through the top and the bottom of the ice pretty cool now we're getting a lot more current going now just give it some time this little plunge pool here is going to fill up this overflow actually works as a perfect pond skimmer because all the pine needles get sucked through here. There's always a pile here waiting for me in the summertime when this thing's running. Right now there's ice, so a lot of those pine needles can't make their way over here. The ground seems to be pretty porous. The plunge pool's not even filling up. It's just going right into the ground. We got a lot more current coming through the overflow. We got a lot of water now on the surface of the pond. Look at that. Here's the hole it dug right through. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get a nice towel, put it underneath the pipe to catch all the PVC shavings, and I'm going to go grab a reciprocating saw and cut this thing off right around here. Alright, here's what I had going down here. 
Gonna shut that off. Now it'll go back to that little bit of trickling of just groundwater. Close this thing up because you never know what kind of mouse or something might come in. Wow, we are close. A 100 foot extension and a 25 foot extension and we just made it. If this was a couple feet further away, I wouldn't have had enough extension cord on hand. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put this towel underneath it. It doesn't matter that there's water. I'm just trying to catch the shavings so they don't go into the pond. And then I'll just shake this out over a trash can. Now we're ready to go with the saw. All right, here we go. That's about right. I was thinking about cutting it at an angle because I thought that might look cool, but that'll actually make ice dams easier to form. So now by losing over two feet of it, there's now less space where the water can cool down and freeze. Here we go. I don't like how that cracked. I'm gonna cut another inch off because it cracked in a weird spot. Now I'm gonna go very slowly. Nice clean cut. See the first time the blade wasn't moving very fast. You want the blade to be moving as fast as possible or else it'll cause this. That's what I just cut off. Didn't want that on the end. Now the towel idea actually worked pretty well. I'd say 98% of the shavings I was able to capture without them going into the water. Alrighty, big difference. Also, that ugly pipe isn't there anymore. Probably in the summertime, this grass will drape over and you won't even know that's there. Hey everyone, it's the next day and today I bought 240 feet of conduit fishing line and I'm gonna fish all the way through it, tie around a heat cable I just bought, fish it all the way back through into the house, plug it into the utility room and then there's no way it'll freeze. It'll be through the entire line. Today I put this 45 on the end of it. Just because I think it looks cool. It's already made a little indentation. That water coming out of the basement's pretty warm. It's only been on there for like 10 minutes. All right, everyone. Now I'm down into the basement and I got my fishing line here. This is used for electrical conduit. Once this thing comes out to the end of it at the pond, I'm going to tie in the heat cable and pull it all the way back into the house where I can plug it in. That way there's no cord running through the property all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down there into the drain line. And... Just keep feeding it down there. This thing's 240 feet. The pipeline's about 150 feet. I bought a 160 foot cable today. Ah, oh, this thing doesn't want to go around the 45 degree corner. Oh no. Maybe I, I gotta jiggle it around. All right, we got it. It went around the corner. There's only one obstacle and that was it. This should be pretty simple. It's always a pain in the butt when you're doing this with really tiny electrical conduits that have like 180 degrees worth of corners and stuff.
All right, that thing's getting pretty light now. I'm going to go outside and see if we made it to the pond yet. All right, we didn't make it out yet, but I'm going to leave the camera here so you can see when it comes out. Oh yeah, we made it. And I didn't even overshoot it by as much as I thought. There's like 10 feet of slack out on the ice. All right, so here's what we're gonna be fishing into it today. This product right here. We've got 160 feet of it. We're not gonna be using any of the clamps it came with, because it came with a couple baggies of, these are clips for your rooftop shingles came with four bags of them we don't need those take the rubber band off all these zip ties another one and then we're gonna start fishing it back from this end through the pipe we'll just wipe this off and we can plug it in in the house I like this heat cable, honestly, a lot better than that one I bought online, which was only 10 feet. This one looks like it's actually real nice rubber. The other one felt like a waxy paper. I really didn't like the quality. So I'm going to set this roll down on the ice and rig it up to go in. I'm happy that this pond is partially frozen. I actually got a nice place to work. So now I'm going to rig this thing up to get pulled back in the house. And what I'm going to do here is take this little piece of wire, copper wire, stick it through the hole in the terminals. All right, everyone. So this is what I'm going to rely on to pull it back through the pipe, just like this. We're going to start pulling again from inside the house. And I'll leave you guys out here as I start rolling it back in. Great, we got it in this time, coming out to check. Now, I'm going to head back in the house with the camera, and I'm going to go and make sure this thing doesn't, you know, somehow get a big kink and get stuck in there. I'm going to go ahead and roll this entire thing out flat into the woods so I can pull it in in a nice straight line. Whoop, almost fell in the pond. Yeah, I don't like, see how it's pulling in that little kink? That's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't like that, how it's trying to kink. All right, I'm going to take this and throw it over there. What do you guys think? Is it going to go through the ice, or am I going to be able to send it across like a hockey puck? Oh, that ice was actually... I thought it was going to at least crack it. All right, we got it all spread out now through the forest. All righty, back inside, and now it should be really easy to get that cord back in here. Tonight's going to be down to 12 degrees, so I'm going to purposely keep this thing off, hoping it kind of freezes up so I can turn it on and see how well it works. The water 
passing along 150 feet of this cable, it might come out nice and warm at the end. Getting kind of sweaty. I'm gonna make sure to put this in a spot immediately so it can start drying. I don't even think it's gonna rust because this thing is nice and oily. When you're fishing like this, it's always a workout. We got it. Here's the end of the cord. There we are. Now I can disconnect it and let this thing dry off so I can plug it in. We stripped it, yay. New type of wire stripper here. I'm gonna need pliers to get this. There's like a guard around the prong for the grounding. All right, now I'm gonna pull out a good amount of this. All right, is that enough? Yep, it now reaches the GFCI plug. Now I'm gonna put this through I'm gonna try to get it through right here where all the rest of the wires are coming through. That way, opening and closing the cover doesn't wear it out. Yep, right through here. Make sure it doesn't interfere or get in the way of any of the moving parts on the pumps. Yep, you see coming out right here, this is gonna be warm. Not too warm, it doesn't matter if it's touching things, obviously. See, it came right out. And I'm probably gonna put a giant zip tie snugly against this, which comes from the perimeter drain, just so it doesn't fall into something moving or make one of the float valves not work, float switches not work. All right. Oh, I love this thing. You can yell through it and talk to someone out by the pond. That's kind of cool. All right. Neatly zip this up and plug it into that GFCI. It can share with the washer. All right. We got that thing attached now. Right here. Neatly put it down. Going into the pit. When I plug that in, that thing draws a lot of power. The light's sl uh, slightly dimmed. Now, when you're in a customer's house, always cut these things off so no one gets their eye poked out. And then file these off so no one gets cut on them. Go around, snip, 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 and snip. Oh wow, that's actually warm. I didn't think it was going to be warm to the touch. It is. So give this time to work and it may actually send out hot water into the edge of the pond. That's kind of cool in itself. Yeah, that's actually nice and warm, this whole thing. Cool. All right, we're back outside and before this thing melts its way through the ice, and I did unplug it for safety reasons, I'm gonna wind this thing back up, put a zip tie around it and just leave it right here on the edge. Wow, we used almost all of it. I thought there was gonna be a lot left. So this thing really is 150 feet long, the pipeline. All right, what do you think of that? While I was winding it up, I thought of that idea. 
just wrap it around the end of the pipe so if it freezes you plug it in this will get anything out of the pipeline now if it was the freeze we are nice and set now under fears that this is going to use a ton of power it's not going to stay plugged in and because it's plugged in in the house i can't use one of those temperature sensors i mentioned i'm thinking that i may actually put a bluetooth um plug in where that thing is that way i can turn it on if i'm not home that's kind of cool too can just remotely turn it on if i'm away and i see oh there's a lot of cold weather up here and i'm not around to flip it on i think that'll work nicely Oh my gosh, this works out even better. I realize now in my utility room there's actually a switched plug that I should plug this in instead. That's not a GFCI. I'm going to have to take care of that, but that's a good idea too. Yeah, I do not want to leave it on all the time. I made a gigantic mistake about a year ago buying a electric water heater. I did it because it was only 400 bucks. The alternative was a fuel oil water heater which is like 3000 I wish I would have not been cheap and splurged on that because the fuel oil ones they have an average lifespan of 20 years instead of 7 and the electric one uses $200 worth of electricity per month it is an electric pig I do not like that thing I regret not replacing it with another fuel oil one Hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching. And if we do get a nice big ice dam in here, I will make a video of it melting out in time lapse. You know, another thought, I think I'm gonna come back out here with like weather flashing tape and go around that because I feel like this is something a squirrel or a mouse is gonna try chewing. And I don't wanna have to go through that pain of fishing this thing back through so early. These things only have a life expectancy usually of five years or so. They don't last very long up on a rooftop. Maybe it'll last longer here. I don't know. But I do expect to replace this thing every five years. It wasn't a big deal. The whole job only took like 20 minutes.